excited to be here. Uh, it's been a uh, long week, it seems, of practice. Uh, we're, we're, we were anxious to get down and, and um, excited to get on the baseball field this afternoon and get a feel for the ballpark. We have great memories here uh, from our, our last uh, trip in 2012 and uh, looking forward to a great weekend of baseball. Hey, uh, opening it up for questions for uh, the entire panel. Coach, you brought Jared in, so he's your game one starter. What uh, what led you to that decision? Uh, you know, just felt like you know the way that everybody's been pitching, and, and we and we feel very confident in uh, all three of the guys that started games in the regional. Uh, just felt like uh, to this point, and, and especially in the last month, Jared's been uh, at least from a strike throwing standpoint has been the most consistent guy, and. And uh, I think he has a lot of confidence, and if he's pitching at his best, uh, it is a good matchup for, for our opponent. Um, but really, it, it really could have been any of the three. It certainly wasn't going to be Howard coming off uh, uh, this past weekend. And, and um, so just, you know, it could have been either Janzik or Traver, and we're just going with Jared. Jared, what does it mean to you to get an opportunity on the road in this type of environment to take the ball for game one? I'm thrilled. I mean, this time last year I was watching on TV, so I'm just really excited to get there, get out there and perform. Evan, what have you seen from Jared this year that uh, gives you confidence in him? Just the fact that he can come in and command the zone with uh, three pitches now. Um, he's really started – his work ethic has been great and his consistency has been awesome. Uh, he's a great competitor and he gets after it every time we give him the ball. So um, – for me, behind the plate, just having a guy out there who wants to be out there and wants to win is it's a it's a huge uh, huge benefit for our team. And I know he, we got a good shot of winning when he's on the mound. Evan, so much was made last year of a great super regional in Fort Worth. What is y'all's approach now to be at a super regional uh, at Texas A&M? Um, I mean, we take the same approach. Uh, we're just going to take it one pitch at a time, um, stay in our routines, and just treat it like another baseball game. Um, I mean, I know it's we're on a big a big platform here uh, playing. And the, and the national spotlight, but uh, we're just gonna stick with what we've been taught. Sauce, so do you have to say much about the team or to the team because of the boomer factor, or does it really help that not a lot of these guys knew him? Yeah, it hasn't come up at all. I mean, the majority of this team, like you said, has zero relationship with Boomer because they, you know, we have a newer group of guys. Had it been last year, it would have been very different. But uh, as I've said earlier this week. Uh, you know, Boomer's a great guy. He comes from an awesome family. Uh, there's there's been zero ill will um, on our end, and I don't think on, on his either. And you know, he had something that he wanted to do <clears throat> in his heart, and that's fine. Uh, um, he handled it 100% the right way, and uh, with the exception of this weekend, we've always we've always rooted for him. So, wish him the best. And uh, there's you know, I, I know fans are trying to make more of that than than there needs to be. But that's okay, and that's what fans do. Coach, you've been through a rematch before when you went played the Longhorns and Super Regionals two years in a row. Ultimately, is that good or bad for college baseball to have Super Regional rematches uh, when you're talking about a game that you don't want to just – it doesn't just need to be regionalized. It needs to be, you, you know, nationwide. Sure. Yeah, I, I think it's bad. I, I think the teams need to, be, need, need to be seated one through 16 at least. And then if, if it comes up and – a and M's the one seed, and we're the 16. Then that's then so be it. But um, you know, and a lot of it depends on year to year. So, for instance, in 2009, when we were at Texas, you know, we weren't deserving of a national seed. We barely got into host, and so I really don't have a problem with that one. In in 2010, I thought we were deserving of a national seed, and the two two of the very best eight teams were playing each other. And the same thing happened last year. I thought A&M was deserving of a national seed, and so did we. And I know that there was a lot of conversation about that down here, but um, but that that's not just Texas. That's you know that's Southern California. That's that's Florida. The Carolina is the same thing. So, in, in, if you're if you're talking about a big picture view, in, in my opinion, the college baseball is the sec I mean, I'm sorry, the College World Series is the second largest money maker for the for the NCAA. We get told that every year at our convention. So I think we've we've grown beyond trying to keep things homey. Uh, it, it's it's time for us to truly seed the teams, and if that if, if it so happens that one team has to travel across the country, then then so be it. But I, and and one more note on that is that I do think one thing that affected that this year was the money that had to be spent on the regionals 
because there were no there was no West Coast host. So there was I think there was going to be some give and take on that, um, and I think that's why you know we're in the situation we're in. Um, but I'm not saying that. I mean, A and M was certainly deserving of the seating that they have, and we were in no way deserving of a national seat. So this year, I you know I don't necessarily have a problem with it, but on the broad scope of things, I do. Coach, I heard you describe it as you know a great life experience for your players. Could you just speak to that play? You know, the Super last year in Fort Worth, and now here in College Station. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've you know I've as a coach over time, having you know we've been in six of these things in the last eight years, and I think. Um, the one thing I've, I guess it's age, but the one thing I've tried to do a better job of is just make sure that these guys understand um, this is just going to be a lot of fun. And if you try and make it more than that, if you don't let them have fun, if they don't look at it that way, if you're uptight, uh, then it's going to be over before you know it. And, um, you know, we have our little guy Micah, who everybody has, has, has uh, heard about, and he brings a lot of perspective and the experiences that we've had with him and his family brings a lot of perspective. And we had the, <clears throat> we had the same conversation in the College World Series last year. Um, certainly, we want to win, and we're going to do everything we can to win. But at the same time, um, I want these guys to enjoy this because every single every single former player of ours that are in the major leagues that played in one of these things has come back and said this was the best experience I've had in baseball. And we're talking about guys that have played in a World Series, a Major League World Series. So um, I want them to enjoy that, and, uh, and, and, I, and I want to enjoy it because it's really hard to do. Evan, Coach mentioned Micah. What has he meant to you <coughs> in your kind of development in the program and for the program as a whole? Uh, I mean, last year when I came in, um, we started um, building that relationship, and, and the relationship has only gotten stronger um, between him and I and between his family and myself. And for me, it's just it's a it's a wonderful blessing for me because he's the strongest strongest little guy I've ever seen. And uh, you know, it's said that God gives his, his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. Um, and he just shows me that with a little perseverance and a little like and and a, and a joyful outlook on life, anything is possible. Um, so without him, I don't think there would, I don't I don't think I'd be the same person I am because he he's taught us so much perspective. He's taught me so much perspective. Um, on, on life and just to have a, a joyful outlook even though you don't have a, a promising future. So um, I'm very thankful for his, his family and him. Coach, how do you pitch a bats um, just from the standpoint that they you know, seem to be able to hit one through nine? Well, if I had to pitch to him, we'd be here for about eight hours. But uh, Jared's the one who has to do that, at least start it. But, um, you know, you just have to you have to execute pitches. There's no doubt about it. And you know, there is you know, you have to throw strikes. You can't um, you can't set the table for any team. Uh, I think the biggest I think the biggest thing in this park and, and in this environment is you're going to have to be able to get off the field. You're going to have to be able to make a play or execute a pitch um, so that the innings don't steamroll on you. And and that's going to come down to just like. Uh, Evan and, and Jared talked earlier that just their routines, controlling their body, uh, controlling their breathing, so they can execute pitches. And um, but you know they they have a very versatile lineup. There's power, there's speed. Obviously, there's experience, elite experience, uh, and talent. Um, so you know they, we're very respectful of our opponent. Uh, but it's never about the best team. It's only about the team that plays the best. So we're hoping that the Horn Frogs are the one that play the best this weekend. Jared, let me ask you that question. How do you pitch Aiden bats uh, this weekend? Uh, simple as just one pitch at a time. Don't don't try to take it as a big picture. Uh, just execute one pitch at a time and trust your defense behind you. That's all I can do. Jared, you had to, you were redshirt last year. <clears throat> How tough was that for you to be patient through that year? And now that you look at it, here you are starting a super regional this year, your first real year to play. What? How's that all feel for you? Well, at first I was a little upset, but I took it as a positive note and got better in the weight room. Watching the previous pitchers ahead of me, the Preston Morrison, the Trey Tickles, those guys was really impressive to watch. I, I took notes from them. I did as well as I could in the classroom. Then I went in the summer and tried my best, and I trusted the process, and here I am now. Coach, could you have imagined that you'd be starting <laughs> – Jared Jansen, no. your super regional this year? No way. You know, not this not this time last year, relative to where he was at the point in his career and uh, relative to the guys we had coming back and the guys we thought we had coming in. But 
every ounce of credit should go to him and, and Kirk Sarlos, main, mainly to Jared. You know, here's a guy that, like you said, this time last year he was in the Valley League, right? What league is that? Uh, Coastal, Coastal Plains, Plains League. league. You know, and he's you know, starting summer ball when the team's in the postseason, and um, and then he comes back and he starts to show promise, and then he's a reliever, and then he's our most trusted reliever, and then he we say we got to start this guy, you know, and then he starts pitching on conference weekends, and and now he, you know, he pitched the the most important game of a regional is that game two, and and he started that game, and I, we have full confidence in him. I mean, I couldn't be more proud of him, and he's I told him that, and uh, he I hope he knows that. Um, and he doesn't need to do anything different than he's done the last couple of weeks. Just go execute pitches. Coach, last year, Lucan wins the National Player of the Year, then with the home run derby, I think, over at the All-Star game. What has he meant to your lineup as a true freshman? Well, I mean, he's he, first and foremost, he's a great presence in the lineup, you know, and uh, so, like, for Evan hitting in front of him and uh, and Barzilli hitting behind him, you know, he just, there's, you have to, you, Kind of like A and M's lineup, you have to you have to pick your poison at some point. You're going to have to pitch to somebody, and so he, he get, it's a great presence. Um, as I've said all year long, he's a better hitter than he is a power hitter. You can look at that when his, in his walks and strikeouts. He's got a great concept of the strike zone. He uses the whole field to hit. Um, he's not the most fleet of foot guy, but that's okay. You know you don't have to run fast when they go over the fence. So um, you know I know that the south wind in our ballpark blows in. The south wind here blows out. So Hopefully Jared can execute pitches at the bottom of the strike zone and and uh, maybe a few balls get left up for our guys. But um, you know he, he's as good a college hitter as there is in, in in college baseball, regardless of his age. Time for can a you couple talk about more. Your relationship with Rob Childress. I mean, there's a point in time where state teams were not playing y'all on Tuesdays, and he was really the first one to do that. And then yeah to move into A&M slot in the Big 12 and sure. now going forward the two flagship baseball programs playing two years in a row. It yeah. seems like an interesting relationship. It is. It's really good. You know, I, I, if we were a little bit closer in terms of distance between College Station and Fort Worth, there would be more personal side. There would be more of a personal side to it. Um, he was my first call um, when, I had a ch when I was coaching the USA national team in 2013 uh, to be on my staff and it just didn't work for him at the time with his family. But I, I have a tremendous amount of respect. Uh, for not just what he's done here, but what he's done prior to his time in A&M. Um, I love his honesty. Uh, he's a guy that he's going to tell you exactly what's on his mind. So if we're talking about a scheduling thing and, you know, some guys, some coaches like to hide behind certain things as to whether they're going to play or not play or whatever. And he's he's very honest. And so, um, you know, when we see each other, we try and spend, spend as much time together as we can. Um, but I really have a tremendous amount of respect for what he's done here. And um, he's been he's a ridiculously hard worker. He's a great baseball man. He's an outstanding family man. I have respect for his staff. I recruited Will Bolt a long, long time ago uh, when, when he was a high school player uh, to try to get him to go to Tulane. So um, we're very respectful of, of everything that's going on here. Time for one more. Evan, how much were, Evan, how much were you all looking forward to this rematch in terms of when A&M, when the, the tournament was announced, they didn't say anything when they were national seed, but they actually kind of cheered when they were paired up with TCU. In terms of the, the rematch, they kind of talk about revenge and payback and those type things as well. Uh, I mean, it's just it's just another it's just another matchup for us. I mean, obviously the fans are blowing it out of proportion, I and mean, that's because that's what they do. But um, we'd be just as excited if we were playing somewhere else this weekend. So um, for us, it's just another game, just and we're just going to take it just take it one pitch at a time. Daryl. Coach, I was going to ask you, with the, the 12th man and the bubbles and all that kind of thing, how big is it to try to win game one uh, and at least get off on the right foot against these guys tomorrow night? Well, certainly it's – well, I mean, I don't, it doesn't have anything to do with bubbles or whatever else goes on here. I don't even know. But um, I know there's a lot of swaying. But, uh, uh, you know, in, any series you want to win the first game, you know, but it is a series. And uh, so – it's about you know try and find a, it's the first team to two games so we're, we're certainly hoping that we're the first team uh, to to get to that point uh, but this truly is going to be a great experience and I've talked to these guys a lot about uh, you know 2010 and and uh, you know what's unique about this team is they have a lot of postseason experience but all of it's in our park and so you know there it's awesome to play in front of your own fans but there's also a lot of uh, greatness to winning on the road and. You know, it's certainly a lot harder, but uh, it, it, it can be as rewarding, if not more so.